Hello, yeah, good evening. Uh, welcome to this mentorship program. Uh, my name is Deepak Dayal. I'm the managing partner for Dayal Legal Associates. I will give you a brief introduction of myself so you do get a fair idea of who you are dealing with, where I come from, and what my background is, and why am I doing this, okay? We have people from various different cities, right from Mumbai, Delhi, Gurgaon, to Odisha, to Sam, and I, and I think that is the beauty of this whole technology platform, that we can all communicate with each other. Uh, we are breaking the geographical barriers. I started off, I always had, I come from a very, I would say, uh, I've been gifted and I'm coming in from a very privileged family. Uh, my grandfather was a lawyer. My father is still a senior advocate at a very senior age, is still actively practicing. But, but I want to make sure that, you know, people who may not be coming in from very privileged legal background also are able to establish themselves and uh, it should not be a hindrance to them whether you come from a legal background or not. I've done my MBA in finance and marketing from IMT Ghaziabad. It was a full three-year program. Uh, I worked with the American Express Bank for about seven, eight years. I worked in the private equity sector. Uh, I've been on the other side of the, you know, I've been uh, uh, part of the corporate sector in Singapore and Dubai and India, where I used to hire lawyers and work with lawyers as a client. And uh, over the years, I'm now on the other side where we work with clients who are on the corporate sector and uh, you know private clients. So it's been an interesting journey for the last 25, 30 years. And the whole idea of mentorship is you'll be surprised. I'm doing it not because I can teach you stuff. The whole idea is that I should be able to learn from all of you. Okay. And I'm not going to give you any major gyan and give you some secret formulas in life which you apply and suddenly things will work out because there are no fixed templates for success. It's, it's a hit and trial method. What will work, what will not work, nobody can look and predict the future. If I could, I would not be working today. I would have become a billionaire and uh, you know sorted myself out. We're all struggling. The whole world is changing. It's a very, very dynamic environment today both for management as well as law graduates. Uh, so again, a quick background. I've been on the corporate side. I started off from the corporate side and I have deep interest in the business because I, because after my MBA, I got into businesses. I worked in the corporate sector, which worked with some of the best multinationals in India, as well as overseas, American Express, Toshiba, private equity firms in Singapore and Dubai. I spent in my uh, 30 years of work experience i've spent about 15 years overseas and 15 years in india and uh, so it's it's a it's a good understanding of both uh, uh, how legal fraternity is outside of india and how it is in india we have a strong litigation practice which has been there i still handle my grandfather's cases unfortunately our legal systems are so slow that it has taken three generations of lawyers and three generations of litigants and still the cases are stuck in supreme court so that is sometimes the unfortunate truth of the Indian legal system. Uh, I've also worked a lot with, uh, with uh, associations like Asochem, PhD, FICI, CII. And when I say I work with them, we work with them as knowledge partners. Uh, they are legal associates and myself. So we designed workshops for the last about seven, eight years. We have, I have done over 100 workshops in India as well as overseas. We've also been, I've also designed programs for the Judicial Academy and I have actually trained the judges also on various aspects, including cyber law, where most of them don't frankly have much of an idea, but they do want to learn also. Uh, so that has been important. And I'm a very, very firm believer that just getting and gathering paper degrees is not the end of it. Yes, we all work really hard when we are in colleges, whether it is law, MBA, BBA, whatever. And at the end of it, we get our degrees, which is wonderful for our self-esteem and for getting an entry into the profession. But the moment we have, and this is what I've learned from my Western counterparts, I've worked with some um, British law firms, with British lawyers in Dubai. First thing they say is that, you know, it's great, you've got a great degree, wonderful marks, but you can throw it in the dustbin and let's see what you can do on the job. 
right? So some of you may be coming in from very prestigious colleges. Some of you may not be coming from the best and the most prestigious colleges. Some of you may be straight A++, you know, rank holders, gold medalists. Some of you could be just about scraping through and getting, you know, 45, 50% marks just to scrape through. But in life, who will be a winner and who will really not be a winner? And the race from zero to hero and hero to zero is really fast. Okay. So anybody who is not getting great, good grades and sometimes has not shown, it is not reflecting in his academic scores. You will all be surprised how fast they can actually grow and do extremely well in, in the professional world. Okay. So a couple of things I will talk about this. Uh, uh, and I'm also a very firm believer. One should also question ourselves of our career choices. Okay. Why are we doing law? Why did we do our MBA? Why did we get into a CA or a CS or a, you know, what is the objective? Is it because we didn't want to take science? So we got commerce and we took arts and this is how we are. So please answer this for yourself, not for me. What is the reason you have chosen a field? And also in today's day and age, we can be flexible. I know so many people who have done law, but today are running really amazing businesses. They are in completely different fields away from law also. Okay. But the law degree really helps them because, you know, law is a pillar and a activity, which is part of every business organization. Okay. Without legal knowledge, nobody can do anything successfully. Law and finance, two strong pillars. Okay. There was a time when engineering was the trend. Everybody wanted to be an engineer and then the trend came for doctors then the trend came for lawyers. So trends will come and go, but in your lifestyle and your life cycle of working in, in the professional world, we, I would say we have good 40, 50 years. You know, we start working when we are 25 or so. So you have at least, I would say 50 more years of actively working. My father is 87 years old and believe me, he touch wood, he puts in much more longer hours than I do. And he still goes and fights cases in the Supreme Court on a very, very regular basis. And he's 87 years old. Okay. So we need to plan for a long term. So don't go by trends. What I feel is that you must look at your own personality type. Okay. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you a people's person? Do you want to look and do work by yourself? Are you a team player or not? These are the things based on which you can, you should actually choose what you are more suitable for okay rather than just somebody coming in and saying do this do that and this has better future than the others because times are changing trends are changing the opportunities will change every three years or five years the trends change so you cannot base your long-term career planning based on a trend or what is more popular today okay you need to also be very clear whatever you love to do i think you should really be into that particular field rather than somebody saying oh litigation is great or criminal side is wonderful or i want to do finance what is it that really interests you look at that look at your personality trait okay i can help you understand and evaluate yourself each person is different okay yes it's a good idea to become a generalist in some ways to figure out because most of us don't even know what various parts of law could mean, uh, you know, what really is it, what is required to become a good criminal lawyer? What is it that requires you to be great at uh, commercial law or international arbitration or sports law or fashion law, new, new, so many new areas are coming up constantly, right? So one is look at your personality type, choose wisely. I will get into the questions which you have all asked, you know, what area of specialization, how to do. Yes, it's an important decision to be made. We'll come across all that very, very quickly. What are all the choices where I'll stick more to the legal side management. We have few people, but I will get to them also. But, but ideally, what are the choices? You could, you could work in a large law firm. You could work in a smaller law firm. You could work with a private 
lawyer. You could work in a big four consulting firms. The EYs, Deloitte's are hiring lawyers in a very, very big way today. You could work on the corporate council side of large organizations. Nestle is, uh, you know, you name all big firms. They have huge legal teams and you could be part of one of those legal teams with an ultimate aim that you could, you know, you join a law firm, you could become the managing partner, partner over the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You could set up your own practices. You can join in the team of a general counsel and eventually over 15, 20 years, you could become a general counsel or a director legal with Microsoft or Google. Okay, these people are also not coming out from out of the air. There are people like you and me who just work hard and that is how they get there. Okay, but definitely it is an extremely, extremely competitive environment for all of you guys. Okay, compared to our generation, we had it very, very easy. The challenges are extremely high, but then the opportunities are also equally high. Okay, I work with so many startup clients. They're youngsters like you and suddenly is not as important as your desire to succeed. Because what I'm trying to do is give maybe two or three hours every day, at least for the next, you know, till, until the lockdown. And after that also, I want to give at least one hour to youngsters like yourself, could be law students, even young lawyers, and sometimes even senior lawyers. They need a lot of mentoring. There is a lot. I have a mentor also. You know, so mentoring is where you you have a guide at a professional level, and it's not a short term relationship. It's not that you say, "Fine, I'll I have a mentor for three weeks." You know, it doesn't work like this. The whole idea is that if the person is right, and both the person who is mentoring is also learning from uh, from young people like you. So it's 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 a both way relationship. It's not that I'm doing anybody a favor. It's, it's that is not the case at all. Okay, we are going to be coming in. I think time is passing really, really fast. So let me very quickly comment on some of the features which are really important on this. First of all, the mentorship and the guidance program, how it will work. Uh, okay, so the whole idea is to develop soft skills and soft skills are really, really critical. We're talking about communication skills, not just language, but communication skills critical most people whether it is a lawyer or an engineer or an mba student have extremely poor communication skills because of which they do not do so well in the corporate world as well as in their own practices at times so communication skills i will give it very very high priority second is interpersonal skills okay how do you deal with people and none of these are taught in colleges and schools there is no classroom for it but and i will show you how you can improve your interpersonal skills. Okay. We need to be extremely street smart. Work hard, definitely hard work pays, but you have to work very, very smartly in your system. And there are ways, so it's like saying don't don't work like a donkey, but love, but work like a you know Arabian horse. Okay. And there are very clear systems that you could use to enhance your productivity level. Just pure hard work might not take you where you would like to go in five, 10, 20 years time. Okay, understanding human behavior, critical, especially in the legal field, even management field. At the end of the day, we are dealing with people, judges, lawyers, clients, bosses, subordinates. We are not working, yes, we use technology with computers, but at the end of the day, we are dealing with people. Okay, so it is law is a science and an art both, right? Some are successful, some are not successful. And I think people who understand human behavior is the biggest asset which a person can have. And you're not being graded in your colleges for that. Somebody who gets an A plus plus or a 99 percentile may be a complete idiot, right? And you will realize in the real world, he will fail miserably. Okay, and you could be getting a C and you would, and I've been interacting with managing partners, Mr. Rajiv Lutra, uh, of, of Lutra and Lutra, GSA, you know, I'm part of SILF, the Society of Law Firms. I'm the smallest boutique law firm there, but I interact with all of them. When we sit down and we discuss how we hire people, why we hire, what kind of people we hire, it is a complete, uh, you know, I'm trying to give you the inside stories of 
how the recruitment process happens in the corporate world in law firms okay because i have no vested interest i am not you know recruiter i am not getting paid through those things so those things slowly in the next uh, few weeks time and our next few sessions i will give you more insight as to what is the hiring process and why you must not fear failure failure of being rejected in a job you yeah. we i may not have the time to explain but sometimes the worst person is hired for the job because we feel the brightest one will quit in 3 months or 6 months or a year okay so you are being rejected maybe because you are too smart for that job okay so these are things which uh which we will go over in the next few months time uh lot of questions on how to learn the you know the the nitty gritties of the litigation side i feel the best people to learn from are the court clerks most of them they know more much more than most of the lawyers in fact i have worked with two three court clerks and i told them that you are my boss please let me intern with you and so these are really really critical points we'll go over all this future is bright so please i don't want to scare you and you know don't feel that i'm giving you a very harsh reality the opportunities are extremely extremely good even in times like these right but yes there are things that you need to do to adapt yourself to ensure that things go fast most of the questions are based on you know how do i get good internships how do i get good placements okay we i fully understand that no secret formula for success plus the fact that i see too many people just blindly going and interning with big branded law firms okay i will not take names of those but it adds zero value sometimes you know because is there some real learning which has happened or you just want to put it up on the resume when we get resume for hiring and i'm discussing with large firms uh, law firms consulting firms i've got friends all over who are general counsels we know that 80% of the resumes uh, resumes have information which is not correct unfortunately that's a fact okay just putting names so 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 the real learning has to happen okay please understand that getting degrees hanging them on your walls the lot of queries on what courses to do which ones to do definitely i'll take a session on that because next few days you have more time you must do as much as possible online programs courses extremely essential but don't just get into it i think we are going to get cut off unfortunately i have not had time for answering specific questions but we will do that and if you like this please comment so we can have longer sessions and for me also it's just an investment in time but if you find it useful we will have more sessions and i look at it that we would like to have i would like to have a 3 5 10 year kind of a relationship with all of you at a professional level where come to me and uh, in trying to solve your problems or issues i am learning and i am getting also uh, it, it, it's great fun i enjoy working and uh, you know uh, with younger people okay so let me also now take up the questions which had come in and uh, great we get some more time to continue with this okay so as i was mentioning i think soft skills really really critical because i have also been interacting with a lot of my clients and friends who are you know national level hr directors of uh, companies uh, like ey deloitte the large law firms and what is it that companies look for when they are hiring people okay now everybody is coming out from good colleges usually with great grades then what are they looking for so one is that you know we we have excellent you know books excellent professors especially in large metros and the best colleges so first of all not everybody is coming in from the best colleges with the best professors and the best uh, infrastructure within those colleges but even if you are unfortunately and this is the harsh reality that the full time professors except for very very few really top line colleges themselves unfortunately do not have great experience of the real world okay 
they may have phd degrees they may have qualifications on paper but practical experience is extremely low people like myself now are coming in who are joining in for short term programs as a visiting faculty guest speakers which is happening a lot in mba colleges and in some good law schools also so unfortunately the syllabus the books the curriculum is so outdated it is not kept in time with what is going on so what companies companies do not have the time resources energy or money to spin spoon feed you they start hiring they keep giving you very nice salaries but they expect you to start being productive and useful to the company from day one unfortunately most of the graduates from even the best business schools best law schools don't have a clue of what is going on because you know you worked in a classroom you are you've got great excellent grades you've got promoted each year you get excellent scholarships you know your degrees are there but are you being prepared for the real world okay that is the key question internships are mandatory but i have what i am seeing is that again most of the time and, and it's not your fault alone it is also the fault of the person who is giving you the internship opportunities really they don't have the time inclination real need to sit down and train the other person okay for them or an intern is used to be in our time used to be somebody who would go and get coffee for them and we would be at the photocopying machine uh, just doing absolutely stupid clerical work so times change but still in many ways it is extremely very very few good companies where the internships are very very structured okay so most of the time the internships with, with individual litigation lawyers smaller law firms they themselves are unfortunately not very professionally managed i do want to give you an insight of you know what are the advantages and disadvantages of working with very very large law firms working with very small law firms and working with individual lawyers okay especially for people who are not living in the delhi mumbai hyderabad and bangalore most of the large companies unfortunately still are in the big metro litigation on the other side has huge opportunities right because every small whether it is criminal side or civil side has huge opportunity that the district lower courts level the high courts in every state and not everybody has to become a supreme court lawyer and there are challenges and when you actually look at it it is in a way tough and challenging for every person in every profession and on the other side people have done really really well challenges are there but it can be financially be extremely lucrative profession you can be your own boss you can now in today's day and age completely work remotely so so those opportunities are available to a lot of us okay i don't want to go over the specific questions and the idea for me to be asking these questions were that these are questions which somebody is putting up but i think everybody will benefit as i go along because i really want to make it a little bit more more specific okay right jyotirmay roy banerji has uh, has asked a question on choosing the subjects for his masters okay and he's saying he's interested in multiple you know there are multiple choices and also may want to do an mba so my suggestion here will strongly be that again choose your masters subjects carefully and also what you want to specialize in it has to again be based on your interests and your personality types don't go by herd mentality that everybody wants to do litigation so you also want to get into litigation okay are you suited for it what are the traits required for what kind of law practice you need to understand do you want to live in a big city do you want to live in a small city do you want to go overseas to practice today india has become the global hub for recruiting lawyers okay india desk as one would call it <clears throat> is a great opportunity for jobs in singapore dubai uk but but dubai and singapore and i have first hand experience of these countries the best talent is not even staying in india anymore okay so, so but you need to work on you know your our english law system is great a uh, little bit of fine tuning is required and you could look at you specializing in international arbitrations for that matter okay 
so like indian doctors are known and renowned indian engineers no big multinational can function without indian engineers or indian doctors in a hospital similarly today lawyers are being hand picked and taken overseas to join overseas practices at the india desk so they and if somebody can get a professional qualification from that local country even better than they can actually practice local when i was in dubai so i could not you know go to the courts in dubai or i could not go to a court in singapore but i could practice indian law okay and cross border there is lot of opportunities there in those professions so my answer is and definitely pursue mba there are other questions also where if you can do an mba don't just do it for a paper degree first of all uh, company secretary the you know if you do a cs program extremely good because companies are tightening their belts if if there is a job they will want to hire an llb guy who can do the corporate secretarial work also instead of hiring two people they will hire one people okay make you do two times the work but they will give you maybe three times the salary also so degrees don't don't hurt let me put it this way okay the more the better if you can do a ca cs uh, cfa mba definitely going to do it but just don't do some distant learning program which is completely meaningless and uh, people will in an interview or when you start working they will find out in, in in a month's time that you don't know anything okay so if you're doing something then do it with the specific objective of actually learning rather than again just paper don't collect paper degrees not going to help you okay vishwajit rao has asked a question on how to use the time during lockdown and what to do about skill development and internship okay so during lockdown obviously i think we should look at it as a great opportunity rather than saying we are stuck at our homes we can't do anything you have all the time most of us have access to broadband we can do online programs you can search on youtube and do so many courses i will next session guide you specifically on programs which you could look at some amount of money needs to be spent by you but it's an investment in education is the best investment i would say so spend money if required on your own education because later on you will not get the time what's happening is as we get into our professional careers if you take up jobs in good organizations large law firms believe me they will not give you sufficient time you'll be working on kind of 12 hour shifts and it's uh, it's you will just not get the time right now you are young you don't have families most would not be married make the most of your time okay and i'm not saying that you just become a become a nerd and all you do is just just study but take part in extra curricular activities go with your friends develop friendships take part in uh, in, uh, in in extra curricular activities organize events because the networking activities is what you are learning now the relationships you will build today will come in handy okay talk to any successful person in the corporate world business world or law and you know the successful ones can pick up the phone and talk to somebody and get their jobs done okay so who will pick up your phone who is your 3 am friend because initially and that is what the peer groups are all about okay so develop close relationships which will last you a lifetime extra regular activities today you might say what's the big fun if somebody is organizing a ted event or somebody is you know organizing a music festival or getting sponsorships for the college believe me this is where i think being street smart starts coming in gives you a real test of what will happen in the world outside okay so and these things are not really measured in colleges but people who are interviewing you they understand what you have been doing in india we still just focus on grades alone but that is changing like it has changed in the us and the western world completely okay manan agarwal has asked a question on uh, freelance work in legal profession i think the future is changing completely it used to be the traditional employer employee model which is completely completely changing and the this is where the opportunities for all of you lie to become consultants or freelancers 
or people who are in a way your own bosses this is the future okay because companies also don't want headcounts fixed cost and you also don't want to become slaves of organizations so but it is not very easy to get started but this is where the future is get some experience have a group unfortunately in law we do not have a very systematic way of grading a lawyer okay we have the legal 500 for but that's for really very large law firms even mid sized law firms boutique firms individual lawyers really don't even get there because it costs too much time money and effort to be part of the legal 500 fraternity okay so when clients also have to look for a good lawyer how do they figure out who is a good lawyer okay normally they will say do you know such and such person so in the litigation field people are fighting bar council elections like crazy why because their banners are put their names you know it's a personal branding issue which happens but otherwise so there are some issues which we have not just in india but globally where there is no rating agency for lawyers okay so how do we know who's a good lawyer okay we'll i'll come to that later on but these are issues which everybody faces okay so people are normally saying do you know abc person just by knowing abc person if hundreds of people have heard of him does not make him a great lawyer okay so uh, these are uh, as you you know slowly over the years you will probably understand more of this okay so tantrata banerji has asked a question on uh pre placement offers for 21 batch and and where are the jobs so yes it's a tough challenge for people who are graduating this year whether it is mba whether it is engineering whether it is law because the economy is gone for a toss really the economy is in a bad shape because of this lockdown so unfortunately many of us may have to suffer for a couple of quarters because companies are not coming in recruitments are not happening there is a general freeze so these this is 2020 is definitely a little difficult year for everybody and we again we should look at it in a positive way you have time and energy do virtual internships do programs courses upgrade knowledge skill sets mentoring sessions uh, and i will also tell you that you don't have to have just one mentor you can have two three good mentors you can find uh, you know i'm not unique there are many people like me could be living in your cities and idea is to go there for understanding explaining and believe me build up a relationship and a rapport with them because you will need references professional references these days hiring processes half the time good uh, when when people are serious about hiring people more than half the time it is going in by recommendations rather than people putting up you know going through nokri.coms and all these job portals and recruitment companies complete waste of time okay uh, if i need to hire i'll ask you people or within the office within the colleague system uh, whom should we hire and the recommendations from your teachers from your professors from you know people like me people you have interned with critical critical for your success okay and you will be branded as a good hard working sincere person who honors their commitment or a lazy person who you know you know is just there for time pass so you are going to build up your own reputations here so uh, understand the importance of internships okay these and i am also trying to work more with students who are in their first and second year because they have time on their side really somebody in their fifth year who's just passed out or about to pass out uh, we can we can help them mentor them but uh, you know a lot of time has already gone past not too late but ideally i can guide more a person who's in their first or second year so we can work with them for the next four five years how to make use of your internships how not just to get them but also to ensure that those internships ideally a good internship should land you a job in that organization that should be the whole objective of interning with that organization or that individual okay kunal motwani again a final year student of law wants to know again how to you know the courtroom process 
filing procedures, how to improve drafting skills, networking, what all diploma courses to do. Okay, so very frankly, I really feel that just working because litigation is such a big field, you know, it's, and every courtroom, every judges, the way they operate is different. So there is no fixed, again, template of how litigation or dispute resolution mechanism takes place, right? I will strongly, strongly urge you to understand the clerical side of it. Okay, people, we... We make sometimes fun of clerks that, you know, what would this guy know? He hasn't even done law. Believe me, most of the clerks know much more than their bosses who are lawyers, earning 10 times more. So kill your ego, go to the clerks, understand the nitty gritties. They are the real people who understand and they can, if you work with them, you will get to learn the finer points. Okay of how do you send in an application what are the errors through which you know you are uh, you cannot even do the filing so working with clerks i think i will give it very very high importance litigation itself is extremely time consuming good lawyers have 30 cases going on simultaneously in five different courts so all that juniors are doing is asking for dates so when you say i go in turn with a lawyer you know we need to fully understand what part were you handling Client management, are you interacting with clients? You know, that again is a very different because there's no hard and fast rule, even for big and small lawyers or law firms. How much will they charge their clients? There's no rule book which says, you know, for a litigation per day hearing, I will take, you know, there are lawyers who take 2,000 rupees, there are lawyers who take 10,000 rupees, there are lawyers who will take 50,000 rupees from 5 lakhs to 50 lakhs per day. Okay. So it's, there is no benchmark on that. Similarly, law firms can charge anything for their projects. Anything from 2,000 rupees for a simple project could go right up to 5, 10, 20 lakhs for some very, very simple work where 80% uh, of the income is earned and the costs are practically zero. Okay, so, but to get there, we need to understand the process and be part of the team. Okay. Um, uh, Shiv Sang Thakur has asked about, uh, you know, obviously the fields of internships and how to good and publish articles. Okay. Now, report writing is also a great art. Okay. There are, uh, you know, obviously there are really, really good reports and I will make them available to you. They're in the public domain. So we can look at some templates where the formatting is good, no errors, but again, 10 people will have very different ways to look at something. Where they have to be published also, you could be writing great reports, but if nobody's gonna read them, what good is it, right? So how do you publish? What do you publish? I will, I will guide you on this, uh, give me some time. But uh, in fact, uh, there are some great first year law students who are working with me, has been publishing his report, okay? He's in the first year, uh, uh, Hyderabad based student amazing 50 year students are not able to publish reports which he's able to publish okay so there is no again uh, fixed formula for it but uh, I should be able to guide you as to what are the essential features of making a good report and then finally how do you publish it obviously you need to showcase it in the right platforms okay I have some questions also from Kumal Motwani on um, he's a final year law student unfortunately has not done any internships but has done some moot courts and his challenge now is how to get a job okay first of all Kunal, uh, you need to answer not just to me but to yourself why did you not do internships in your last five years okay uh, yes uh, we have people in different from different parts of the country and not everybody is living in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad and large metros. So maybe you didn't get the opportunity, but again, forget what has happened in the past. We need to move on. It is not too late still. At least virtual internships you should be able to get. How to get a job, real challenge. And I don't want anybody to be in the situation that you're about to graduate and you say now who will give me a job, okay? The idea is that from the first day onwards, 
you should be having sleepless nights what will happen to me once i graduate because law and even mba is not one of those tough courses where it's not like ca chartered accountancy where 90% of the people cannot get in and once you get in getting out is a biggest challenge for them getting out meaning graduating unlike law and mba whoever gets in will eventually come out with a degree okay marks may vary so passing the exam is the easy part but what do you do after that is you know that is that is the bigger challenge so from job point of view yes you can go i'm going to answer another person's question also in this and club it uh yashvi sang sangwani has asked a question she's i think interested in civil services ngo and kind of you know so yes you could prepare for exams judiciary exam advocate on record exam uh, so many other exams competitive exams you could sit for for uh, tax ips with, with law is, is great so you can prepare for competitive exams also work, work on internships Uh, you need to have a fallback plan also you know it's unfortunately it is required today the competition is so high for ias ifs judiciary exams that there are no guarantees even for the best person but are you suited my challenge is in guiding you are you suited for the government or the private sector government sector or public sector private sector large corporates in house council private practice uh, big law firms what type of law would you want to practice getting into criminal law you need a very different personality okay uh, civil side very different uh, nri related work little bit you know consultancy advisory services again different personality types yes most lawyers are generalists where they nobody refuses any work even law firms they could be specializing in something but people will take on any kind of work which they get and there is no rocket science in in law okay if you apply your mind you will be able to find the answers so it is not difficult it is just your commitment to do something there are always pressures financial law sebi laws i'm also looking at you know the feedback which i have received most people have wanted to learn more about financial laws especially to do with rbi sebi contract drafting very very critical in fact my book is just was supposed to be released because of the corona virus situation my book release by the chief justice of india has been postponed by a few days uh, my the book was supposed to be available on online on net, on on amazon but it's got delayed but you know i'll be happy to share contents of the book with you also is on because we need to so much is happening in today's day and age that contract drafting from what it was 5 or 10 years back is completely changing in the way it is being done today Okay, new areas of law, artificial intelligence, sports and entertainment law, which did not really exist few years back. Spectrums, mining laws, you know, it's continuously evolving. So, in a way, it is good for you guys that the older generations don't have a clue about it. Okay, they will the the IPR practice. You'll be surprised. It is most of the engineers are doing IPR or studying IPR law. okay all the startups you know it is it is about taking patenting uh, you know patents and trademarks for your businesses source code so, so specialization is huge we have doctors who are trying to do ipr okay in the whole pharmaceutical industry so you need you know dual uh, uh, specialization in not just your own field but understanding other aspects understanding finance marketing sales for everybody is extremely essential you know you could would be a lawyer and say why should i learn about marketing why should i understand finance i am a lawyer i am great at it believe me once you will get come outside either in practice or even in law firms you will at the end of the day need to become a rainmaker i am not sure how many of you understand the word rainmaker but google it and i will leave it as an exercise for you we all need to be rainmakers today jobs are based on not just your skill set but how much business you can bring in for a firm maybe not right away but whether it is a consulting firm or a law firm 
may not be in your initial one or two years but as you grow up the corporate ladder you will realize that the importance of influencing and getting clients is is directly connected with your revenue and your uh, job security okay so understanding and getting into networking branding yourself is is essentially extremely critical part of it yes you need to be really smart and hard working that is a given we will not even discuss somebody who's a lazy person and has absolutely no brain so doesn't stand a chance but besides that you need so many soft skills to succeed and those are things we must work on okay because again just because you've got good grades does not automatically will mean a great career and just because you have really poor grades will not prohibit you from becoming the best lawyer and the uh, you know biggest earner in india in the next few years time so i will leave it at that we have many many hopefully more sessions if you like any of it give me feedbacks so i also know that you know i am not wasting your time and mine as well and uh, specific questions we will take it on and my job is to just help you guys in getting good internships so i am reasonably well connected with all the self members uh, um there is another law society which i am closely associated with there is also a law academy i am closely associated with all of them are expanding in a very big way my own law firm is i would say very very small so we don't directly hire ourselves but i could give you tips and i could open help you open doors nobody can guarantee jobs and internships to anybody else but objective is to uh, help you in and you can once you know i know that you are a lot of my interns who have been working with me know that that then it is a reference for life it is not just one you know simple uh, internship letter which one would give it's a, it's a reference where the corporate world believe me people just pick up the phone and say hey how about this guy is he really worth it when we hire because everybody's resume looks great on paper okay so what are your soft skills are you a people's person can you work in a team you know these are things which really i feel make the bigger difference and the most important thing in life i think is your enthusiasm level to succeed if you want to succeed you will and if you feel just because of your marks and your iq levels you will do really well yes you may do well but uh, you know so i'm talking more about people who are not coming in from privileged families who are not you know living in big cities who have not gone to the best schools believe me sheer hard work and really good understanding of people and being street smart nobody can stop you from succeeding big in life okay so i think there is enough monologue from my side next time i'm sure we will probably have a smaller session where i can take you know i can have your views also online and uh, i think thank you so much for your time and uh, we'll take it from there thank you so much take care and all the best